country of Malaysia. And it was just, there's something going on with Bell helmets over there because they were asking, every time I'd sell, do you have a helmet to go with it? You know, they bought visors. I sold seven visors for a good amount of money. That, there's something about the name Bell that's going on that, that's why. I sold um, three or four of Bell visors to the same guy in Malaysia. Yeah, hundred dollars. Hey Jack, I know you're just your the helmet. smokes are Bell, aren't they? Six days, six days helmet. But mine, nobody heard of. Mine's a Buco. Oh no, no, the Bucos. I was just going to bring that up. I could have brought the Bucos. Don't sell for near as much. Um, but they still sell. Um, I actually yeah. forgot the better one. It sold for about 50 bucks. Um, but yeah, the, the Bucos don't bring as much, but they still bring a little bit of money. The Bell is just synonymous with, that was the name. The guys are run out um, at uh, Speed Week on the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is really big. Um, the fastest Indian, you look at all those old cars. I mean, that's really big out there, and Bell was the helmet. So. Bell's a name, but was it Fulmer or whatever? You see some of those come up on eBay. I mean, I start looking at all these old vintage helmets, and it just depends on what it is um, and if somebody really wants it. Because some of the uh, Bucos you can still get in the box, but they still don't bring like a, what a Bell does. How about the Cromwell? No, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> From England. That's the first one we ever ever used. Oh, the, the pudding bowl helmet, the half yeah, helmet? The aluminum. Cromwell. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tell that story you told about Uncle Bill. Huh? Tell that story you told the guy about. Oh yeah, Bill. My, my uncle Bill was the first one of the first ones to ever had a helmet in Jack Pine, and uh, and when he first wrote wrote it, people would say, "What are you wearing that thing for?" And Bill would say, "I got a lot invested up there in that head." <laughs> he said, I'm protecting it. And so Bill was one of the first that ever, and that those were Cromwells that we rode in the jackpot. We, to tie that in, we just did an a, a interview for, the, for a man doing a film on the corduroy, and the subject of Uncle Bill had come up and so on, and, and he, we were talking about all of these, not inventions, but these things that the fans were doing that were a little unusual. And Uncle Bill was down here going to Ohio State at the time. And uh, when he when he rode to Jack Pine the first time, he, he figured he had enough time and investment in his education <laughs> down here that he should wear a helmet. And the picture that I have in 49, when you were riding to Harlem, you just had the cloth you know, yeah. thing on. So just in that short period of time there, in that one area, right at the beginning of the 50s is when they, and again, it was the patents that something unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did those metal ones have like a liner at all in them, or was it just? It had leather. The, oh, they had a leather. They had a leather thing down, and leather covered your ears. More like the little half helmet. Yeah. 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 The ones that he's talking about were state of the art. They were actually. Oh, yeah, they, they were lighter. You'll see yeah. them in the British magazines mm -hmm. and everything. Oh yeah. I've seen the pictures. I just didn't know it was inside. Yeah. Those. Uh, those ones he's talking about, those Cromwells. When I bought my first motorcycle, Elmer, right with me, told me, he said, well, you need to have a helmet out. Well, I didn't buy one until I was going to race. And I didn't want to spend the money, and it was like nine ninety five. He said, Elmer said, you need to get a good helmet. And they were selling McCall's. Remember them? Yeah, McCall. That's what most Indy drivers were using, and I thought, boy, that's what I want. It was $59.95. Wow. And I bought it somehow. It, I've had about three really good bells, and I've got two or three HJCs. And that McCall, as far as I'm concerned, was the most com comfortable helmet I ever had. But when I moved from Stang Road to Griswold, I wasn't racing right then, and Brown Warner came over there to, uh, <laughs> late in the fall, and he said, Heaven race with Georgia. He said, I want you to ride my BSA. So, okay, couldn't find a helmet, so I had to borrow a helmet. About three weeks later, I was back out of Sting Road rabbit hunting, and out behind where my garden was, 
there was my McCall helmet full of mouse nests. <laughs> my son used to ride his little plastic motorcycle back there, and he took it back and left it late. So I, had to put, I should have saved that. That'd been a good mantle piece. <laughs> I, I got a kid's story like that. When he was done with the helmet, he put it on the shelf, and Uncle uh, Elm Reichert was a really great can, hand painter. He painted him up a new one and everything. I asked him if I could have one of his helmets, and I, would, I couldn't have been three years old, maybe, or four or something, because I still had a tricycle. I, and I take that helmet, I ride my tri tricycle around in the parking lot there by the, the old shop down there. One day I had, the helmet was on my handlebars and I was riding my tricycle around the parking lot and I rode under a, a pickup truck with a two by four uh, sticking out the back and I bumped my head and I come back to the shop and I was all crying and carrying on. They couldn't stop laughing because I had that helmet on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on my head. <laughs> Uh, right, right now on eBay, I don't know if you're familiar with the paper that Mr. Patton would always sign. Uh, was said uh, roots on it and had a picture of him in a six-day pose on his Patton and all. And I think Jack and Mr. Patton would take them and he would autograph them. And there's one on eBay and it had three days to go the last time I looked at it. Looked at it, and he had signed it and it was up to sixty-one dollars just for that piece of paper that you had signed. Dad, that's my retirement plan. <laughs> 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 Jack said that he can arrange, he can, well, I wouldn't, he was, he can bring you over for a day to just stand outside the barn and we're just going to pass stuff in front of you, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. We're, we're negotiating. Yeah, that's fine. Speaking of crazy stuff, a while back, uh, Joe Novak had talked about some stuff he had in his garage, and I think Al Borden said to him, he says, well, I'd like to see what's in your garage, Joe. So that's all it takes with us. It's like, okay, Joe, bring your stuff in. And we started a new thing for the meetings. It's like, what's in your garage? And Joe's done it, and Al Borden's done it, and, and Jeff Bohr, and uh, Scott. Yeah, Scott Brogan. And uh, today we have uh, and Dane. Yeah, Dane did his. And today we have Jack Henton. So Jack, we're anxious to see what's